Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my predictions for the Manchester United versus Liverpool game at Old Trafford. So score prediction, I'm going to go with 3-1 to Liverpool. And the goal scorers for Liverpool, I'm going to go with Salah. I think he'll get two. And the other goal scorer, I'm going to go with Roberto Firmino. And our goal scorer, I'm going to go with Cristiano Ronaldo. So that is your predictions. This game against Liverpool could be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's last game in charge of Manchester United. Fabrizio Romano has said today that Manchester United's game against Liverpool on Sunday is key for Solskjaer's future. As it stands at the moment, Solskjaer's job is safe so he will not be sacked by Manchester United yet. Manchester United are coming into this game against Liverpool on the back of a 3-2 win against Atalanta in the Champions League. Manchester United overcame a two-goal deficit. Solskjaer always seems to turn it around under pressure. He's still under pressure despite that win against Atalanta. The question is, is Manchester United's 3-2 win against Atalanta the turning point for Solskjaer? Manchester United lost the last league game to Leicester for 2 So reflecting on that, Manchester United are winless in their last three league games. Now obviously Varane won't be playing any part in this game against Liverpool because Varane is out with a groin injury for a few weeks. He's a big miss for us. Martial has got a knock but he doesn't really get in the team anyway Ahmad Diallo's out he doesn't really get in the team and reports have said today that Bruno Fernandes is a shock injury doubt for the game against Liverpool after limping in training Fernandes played the full 90 minutes against Atalanta but got on the end of some strong challenges. Fernandez got two assists against Atalanta. This will be an extremely difficult game against Liverpool. Liverpool are doing really well so far this season. They haven't lost yet so far this season. Liverpool are sitting second in the Premier League. Liverpool are one of the favourites to win the Premier League this season. I hate to say that as a Manchester United fan, but I'm being realistic. If Liverpool do win it this season, they'll be level on titles with Manchester United. As it stands at the moment, Liverpool have won 19 titles. Manchester United have won 20. Liverpool recently had a good win against Atletico Madrid. They beat them 3-2. And Liverpool won their last league game against Watford 5-0. Like I mentioned on the preview... Manchester United and Liverpool is the biggest game in English football. 
because Manchester United and Liverpool are the two most successful clubs in England historically. Manchester United have not beaten Liverpool in the Premier League since 2018. Last season, Liverpool beat us at Old Trafford in the league 4-2. That was the first time Liverpool won at Old Trafford since 2014. Manchester United beat Liverpool in the FA Cup at Old Trafford last season 3-2 and it was a 0-0 draw at Anfield last season. Now Liverpool have got a very good manager in Jurgen Klopp. So far, he's won four trophies as Liverpool manager. He's won the Premier League. Uh, won that the season before last. That was the first time Liverpool won a title in 30 years. He's also won the FIFA Club World Cup. He's won the Super Cup. And Klopp's also won the Champions League at Liverpool. Liverpool have won six Champions Leagues, so they've won the most Champions Leagues out of the English clubs. Klopp has been Liverpool manager for like six and a half years now. He's got a contract with Liverpool until 2024. Before Liverpool, he was at Borussia Dortmund. He won a few trophies at Dortmund and before Dortmund, he was at Mainz 05. Klopp has beaten Solskjaer in the Premier League. Solskjaer has not yet beaten Jurgen Klopp in the Premier League. But he's beaten him in the FA Cup. Klopp is one of the best managers Liverpool have had in this generation. Before Klopp, Liverpool had Brendan Rodgers. Brendan Rodgers enjoyed one good season at Liverpool. Uh, before Liverpool had Roy Hodgson, he's probably one of the worst managers Liverpool Football Club have had. Um, at one point, Liverpool had Kenny Daglish as the manager. He wasn't a good manager, but he was a good player. A long time ago, Liverpool had Rafa Benitez. Um, he was certainly a good manager. Uh, when he was in charge of Liverpool, he won the Champions League, the Super Cup, the FA Cup and the Charity Shield. Um, a long time ago, Liverpool had Gerard Houllier and he was a pretty good manager. He's no longer here now. He died um, a while ago. Uh, one point, Liverpool had Bob Paisley. And in the 70s, Liverpool had Bill Shankly. To be fair, Liverpool were a very good team in the 70s. And like I mentioned on the preview, Liverpool have got a very good squad. I think they've spent over £400 million on that squad since Jurgen Klopp taken over. Um, obviously Salah, he's definitely one of Liverpool's key players. He'll be in contention to play in this game. Salah's one of the best players in the world. Uh, Firmino, he's been in scintillating form this season. So, so far this season, he's made up from last season because I thought last season, Firmino was out of form. Jota was actually ahead of Firmino last season with how poor Firmino was. Firmino being contention to play in this game. 
Liverpool have also got Sergio Mane. You know, he's a good player. You know, he creates chances and he scores good goals. Revert back to what I said on the preview. It will be interesting to see how our defence cope with the likes of Salah, Firmino, Mane. Our defence have got to keep them at bay because if they don't, we will be punished. Yes, Liverpool have got Diego Jota. Um, he's made an impact at Liverpool. Liverpool got him last year from Wolves. He was also a very good player at Wolves. Don't think Jota will start this game, but I think he'll come on as a substitute. Uh, Liverpool have also got Dick Overige. He's their backup striker. Um, I think there's a good chance Liverpool Football Club will sell him next year. Liverpool have also got Mina Mimo back. Um, he was out on loan with Southampton. He doesn't really get in Liverpool's team. Uh, Liverpool have got quite a lot of midfielders in their team as well. Obviously, one of their midfielders is Thiago Alcantara. He's out with injury at the moment. I'm not sure if he's going to be available for this game. Um, another one of Liverpool's midfielders is Jordan Henderson. He's Liverpool's captain. Um, he'll be in contention to play in this game. Another one of Liverpool's midfielders is Oxley and Chamberlain now. He's not one of Liverpool's first choice midfielders. Um, he's done well in some games he's played at Liverpool, but he's injury prone. He's sustained some bad injuries at Liverpool. Chamberlain, though, was also good when he was at Arsenal and he was also good when he was at Southampton when he was younger. Another one of Liverpool's midfielders is James Milner. Uh, James Milner played in Liverpool's 3-2 win against Atletico Madrid. Put a good performance out. I'm surprised Milner's still playing football. Um, you know, when he leaves Liverpool, will he retire or will he go to another club before he retires? Uh, another one of Liverpool's midfielders is Naibi Keita. Um, he scored a very good goal against Atletico Madrid. Now, he's not one of Liverpool's first-choice midfielders, but with a performance apart against Atletico Madrid, there's a good chance he'll be playing in this game. Another one of Liverpool's midfielders is Fabinho. Um, I think he'll be playing in this game. Earlier on this year, Fabinho signed a new contract with Liverpool until 2025. Fabinho can also be deployed as a centre-half. He's played as a centre-half a few times when, obviously, Liverpool have had their centre-halves injured. Uh, Liverpool have also got Curtis Jones. You know, Liverpool, born and bred. He's a young player. Curtis Jones is actually out with injury at the moment. Uh, Liverpool have also got Harvey Elliott now he definitely won't be playing in this game because he's out for the season. He broke his leg in Liverpool's 3-0 win against Leeds. Harvey Elliott's a young player, got a lot of development in him. Uh, Liverpool have obviously got Tsimkas. Um, he's their backup left back to Andrew Robertson. Liverpool brought Tsimkas in last year. He only plays when Robertson's not available. Uh, Liverpool have got Andrew Robertson, their first choice left back for me, the best left back in the Premier League. He'll be in contention to play in this game. Uh, one of Liverpool's centre halves is Canate. 
Uh, they got him in the summer transfer window. He was the only signing Liverpool made in the summer transfer window. They got him from RB Leipzig. Liverpool have done very good transfer business with RB Leipzig. Obviously, another one of Liverpool's centre-halves is Virgil van Dijk. Virgil van Dijk is the best centre-half in the world. Liverpool paid £75 million for him. So he's the second most expensive centre-half in the world behind Maguire. Liverpool got him from Southampton and Liverpool have done very good business with Southampton in recent years. Uh, van Dijk uh, was out with injury last season. And he was a big miss for Liverpool, but since he's come back, Liverpool look a much better team. Another one of Liverpool's centre-halves is Joe Matip. I um, think there's a good chance he'll be playing in this game. He'll probably go alongside Van Dijk unless Klopp decides to go with Gomez alongside Van Dijk. Obviously, Liverpool have got Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh, being part of Liverpool Football Club for a long time, risen up their academy. Trent Alexander-Arnold's the best right-back in the Premier League. And obviously Liverpool's first choice goalkeeper is Allinson. One of the best goalkeepers in the world at the moment, if not the best. Uh, Liverpool have obviously let players go. Uh, they offloaded Shaqiri in the summer transfer window. Um, he went to Lyon. They also offloaded Juan Yardem. Liverpool let him go on a free, he went to PSG. Liverpool also offloaded Harry Wilson. Was it last year, Liverpool offloaded Nathaniel Klein, Deja Lovren and Adam Lallana. And there's other players they've offloaded. So there you go. Solskjaer is facing a daunting run of fixtures. You know, we've got Liverpool on Sunday... Then the next league game after Liverpool, it's Tottenham. Then after Tottenham in the league, it's Man City. And we've got Arsenal and Chelsea coming up soon. And I can assure we're going to drop points in those games. Now on my last video, I gave you an update on Donny van der Beek. Uh, Solskjaer admits Donny van der Beek is frustrated and disappointed over his situation at Manchester United. You know, van der Beek played no part against Atalanta. Earlier on this season, van der Beek was furious with Solskjaer after he was left on the bench in Man United's win over Villarreal. So reflecting on that, he said van der Beek will try to force a January transfer away from Man United following his Villarreal meltdown. Earlier on this season, van der Beek told Solskjaer his best position. He reckons he'd be best served operating as a number six or as a number eight. And earlier on this season, don't forget, Van der Beek spoke about his Man United future in an exclusive interview with Rio Ferdinand. Many clubs are in for Van der Beek and earlier on this season it said Van der Beek's agent is said to be working hard on finding a new club for his client. Earlier on this season, Fabrizio Romano revealed that Van der Beek is planning to leave the club in January. Revert back to what I've said before, though. Solskjaer should be starting Van der Beek, especially in the Premier League, because he's a good player. But like I've said, I haven't got much of a perception on him, because he hasn't been given enough game time at Man United. Van der Beek has endured 18 months at Man United. This season is Van der Beek's second full season at Man United. You know, we got him for £40 million with add-ons included and he's got a contract with Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further year. And he's versatile, he can play in three different roles.
Now, as you all know, there's been rumours about Antonio Conte coming in to replace Solskjaer. Well, Antonio Conte is the favourite to replace Solskjaer at Manchester United. It recently said that Conte wants a meeting with the Man United board and prior to that he said Conte is waiting for a call from Manchester United after he rejected the Newcastle job. Earlier on this season he said Conte would accept the Man United job if Solskjaer was to get sacked and Conte made it clear that he wants a winning project. So reflecting on that he rejected Arsenal and he rejected Tottenham. Conte is available because he left into Milan at the end of last season. But there's a lot of United fans that are demanding him in. Uh, like I've said before, Conte has got a good pedigree behind him because he won a lot of silverware in his home nation. And when Conte was in his first season at Chelsea, he won the Premier League. So he's managing the Premier League before, so that's beneficial. There's also some United fans that are demanding Zidane in, don't forget. Reports from Spain said the other day that Man United contacted Zidane through the recommendation of Cristiano Ronaldo. I think Man United have also held talks with Eric Ten Hag. If Solskjaer does get sacked, he will be the fourth permanent manager to be sacked since Ferguson. Because three managers have already been sacked since Ferguson. We sacked Moyes, Van Aal and Jose Mourinho. I can assure Solskjaer will not get until the end of this season. I think he'll be sacked by Christmas unless results improve. And Solskjaer is out of excuses. Because Manchester United have got a very good squad. It's a title winning squad. So, in reality, we should be winning the Premier League this season. But the problem is, we're not playing as a team, we're playing as individuals like Neville was talking about earlier on this season. Um, Solskjaer received very good backing in the summer transfer window. You know, John Murtough backed him, Darren Fletcher backed him, Woodward's backed him, and the Glazers surprisingly backed him. And Man United enjoyed a very good summer transfer window and spent around £141 million. Brought Tom Eaton in on a free from Villa, brought Sancho in from Dortmund, brought Varane in from Real Madrid and we re-signed Cristiano Ronaldo after 12 years. So there you go, but revert back to what I've said before, when results aren't going our way and when we're inconsistent and when we've been inconsistent, not all of the blame stems from Solskjaer. Obviously he's accountable for certain things, but I think there's certain players that I've got to take responsibility because there's still certain players at Man United that are not good enough to represent the club. Solskjaer has not yet won a trophy as Manchester United manager. We haven't won anything since 2017. Solskjaer signed a new contract with the club in the summer until 2024. There's an option of a further year. We made a mistake giving him that contract because I can assure he won't see it out. If Solskjaer is still Manchester United manager in December, he'll be celebrating three years in charge. But there's a lot of United fans that have got strong reservations about Solskjaer's decision making because analysing the vast majority of the games he's managed at Man United is being tactically naive. And Solskjaer doesn't have a proven pedigree as a manager. That's also a concern. The reason Solskjaer is still Manchester United manager is because he's a legend of the club. That's what's basically saved him. Disregarding being a club legend, I can assure I wouldn't have been here by now. You know, all he knew when he'd taken over at Man United, it was going to be a massive job. And he knew he had a lot to do when he came in. But I just think that Solskjaer is in a position that he shouldn't be in. 
and the expectations are far too high for him to exceed at Man United. So anyway guys, on my next video, I'll be giving you my predicted 11 for this game. So take care, God bless guys, subscribe to the channel, it's Red Devil 24 the name, so there you go.